Wow, it's windy. <laughs> the beautiful Eileen Glass Lighthouse on the Isle of Scalpe. This is one of a couple of lighthouses on the Isles of Harris, Lewis and Scalpe. Um, the other one, which is um, the Butt of Lewis, which is right up in the northern part of the islands, that's the one that gets all the glory, that's the one that gets all the glamour, and, and rightly so, because it's set in a, and amongst a really rugged coastline with raging seas all around it, and it makes a, a fabulous photograph. But this one is one I prefer. This is a perfect, beautiful, coloured lighthouse with the red and white stripes going round, the hoops going round, and it is great, and I love this, I love this lighthouse. It's set in a gorgeous scene. It's obviously the windiest part of the island, as you may gather, but as I look out to sea, we've got the islands of the Uist to, to the south of where I am, and then over there to the southeast, we've got the Isles of Skye, and then over there to the east, immediately behind this lighthouse, we've got the uh, area of Torridon, and uh, I think that is actually Gairlock, the, the, the Gairlock region of Torridon, just over there. And then just to the north of where I am is the Sheant Isles, so it's a fabulous location. And uh, I was here a couple of months ago, and when the seas were quite, were a lot calmer than now, and I was fortunate enough to be able to see a minke whale um, out to sea there, so it, was, it's, it really is a great location. So on the Isle of Scalpe, you get a bridge across from Harris and you drive up to the car park here, uh, which is about a 30 minute walk uh, for, for, to here. And this is the first view that you see when you come over the brow of the hill. This is the first scene that reveals, reveals itself. And so this is where I'm going to start. This is going to be the first photograph. So as you can see, I've set my camera up. I'm ready to go. It's very, very windy. I've got spikes on my tripod, which I've dug really, really deep. Uh, and I'm just fingers crossed uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay up. But uh, yeah, Fuji GFX 50 with a 32 to 64 mil lens on. So I'm just going to get behind, going to compose it. I think it's a fairly straightforward composition, this one. So uh, I'm hoping for a nice, easy start to the shoot. But uh, let's get cracking. God, I'm going to have to find my gloves. <laughs> So I've got it composed the, the way that my eye naturally sees this photograph. I've, I've placed the lighthouse on the far right of the image because that's the way that my eye naturally sees this landscape. I tend to compose a lot of my photographs from, from left to right. I believe that the, um, when somebody looks at a painting or looks at a photograph, they subconsciously scan the photograph from left to right. So I tend to put my subject matters or I tend to um, encourage the eye to move from left to right when I or somebody looks at one of my photographs. So for me on this occasion, again, I'm gonna position the lighthouse on the far right hand side of the image. And that enables me to include, um, well, add balance to the photograph as well. So it's, it's kind of, it's, 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 it's composition through balance and through placement of the main subject. So that's the way I'm gonna uh, compose this photograph. I mean, I don't know whether it's something that you agree with or something that you haven't thought of, but uh, that's, that's how I tend to uh, photograph a lot of my images is from left to right. It's, I kind of wanna prefer to the journey of the eye to move from left to right. So this is just an example of how I actually uh, compose a photograph. I mean, some people may come here and want to compose it in a completely different way, and there's no wrong or there's no right way of doing it. It's just a, it's just a personal preference of mine, at least. So uh, I've got it all composed up. The 32 to 64 mil lens, as I say, there's, there's no filters on it. It's a fairly straightforward photograph. It's, there's nothing too, too complicated about it, but it is, it's a beautiful scene, and this early morning light is really um, adding to the whole sort of flavour of it and uh, looking forward to getting this shot. <laughs> mm. So much interest to capture in just one tiny frame. With the lighthouse taking centre stage.
in this quite awe-inspiring scene. So I've moved into a slightly more sheltered area. Get away from the wind a little bit at least. So I've come much further down to the shoreline and I'm gonna shoot a little bit sort of uh, on the same eye level. The, the, I guess the lighthouse is slightly above me. And it's a, it's a different perspective of the sh from the earlier shot where I was high up looking down. I haven't seen any minky whales, but I have, I have got several seals just wondering what on earth this madman is doing up so early photographing in these conditions. And uh, they're not alone thinking that. <laughs> but I've set myself up here and I kind of quite like this because it's much closer to the water and because it's slightly more sheltered, I'm able to use a neutral density filter just to slow the water down and get a slightly different, uh, a different effect. Now, since I've had this, uh, the GFX50, I've been a great fan of um, the cinematic mode, the 65 by 24 aspect ratio. But it's very easy to get lured into using that aspect ratio for everything. But this is a typical example of being of varying the composition and varying the aspect ratio to suit the, 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 the subjects that you're, that you're photographing. And this particular composition doesn't suit that mailbox cinematic aspect ratio. But a 10 by 8 does, a 5 by 4 aspect ratio. So that's what I'm going to shoot here on a 10 by 8. And it just enables me to have a much tighter crop and to not have so much uh, going on either side of the main subject, the main subject being the lighthouse. And this photograph is about the lighthouse and the, the water in the foreground. And if I think if I included much more to the left and to the right of those main subject areas, I kind of lose the, the impact of what I'm trying to photograph. So therefore, I'm going to shoot on a 10 by 8 aspect ratio. Now, because there isn't any kind of light, the, uh, the water's quite, um, it's quite dull looking, I guess. But I'm going to put a polarizer on as well because there is a bit of glare coming from the sunlight just over there. And it's just, by using the polarizer, it's just taking the glare off the surface of the water. And it is actually darkening the water. But that's not, not a problem because there is no color in it. This is all about the, uh, the, the white water that's being created by the by crashing into these rocks down here. And it looks okay actually, it looks a decent photograph. So I'm going to set it up with a 10-stop neutral density filter. Although I'm out of the wind, or I'm out of the, the, the main force of the wind, I'm still in it. So I've ramped up the ISO to 200 so as to get a more manageable shutter speed. And I'm going to work on a, a shutter speed of around about 30 seconds and just see how that, how that process is. If I'm still getting a little bit of shake, I'll reduce the shutter speed down to whatever it takes to achieve what I want to achieve. So I may even ramp the, uh, the ISO up, possibly up to 200. But it's all ready to go. And, uh, I'm going to shoot this. I've got a boat coming now. There's a boat in the water. I'll just see if it's in my shot. No, not quite. It's okay. So yeah, so quite an easy, straightforward photograph. Let's see how it processes.
Do you know what I've always wanted? A rocking chair. Ever since I was a little nipper, I've always wanted one and I've never had one. So I'm grabbing this opportunity and I'm loving it. Just for a few moments. I'm just taking a breather from the, from the wind. Um, and I've walked across the bay to the lighthouse itself. And this is one of the, the, uh, the keeper's bothies. Um, we're right in the, uh, the shadow of the lighthouse here. So I'm just going to take a few moments of uh, rocking. And then I'm going to have a look around the lighthouse. And uh, I'm quite curious, quite interested. I've never actually been down this far. So I'm interested to see what's, uh, what's there. Uh, it's got so much history, this place. It's got so much history. Over almost 250 years worth of history. So, and I'm fascinated by this type of thing. But uh, yeah, I could rock here for hours. <laughs> But let's go and see what the lighthouse has in store for us. Photography for me is not just about photography. It's about, it's about learning about the landscape that you're in. It's about understanding why it's here and what's here. And whilst I'm waiting for the wind to die down and the sun to go in, I'm just taking the time out to have a look at this beautiful, beautiful lighthouse. It is stunning. It's been here since 1789, 235 years or so. It's incredible, isn't it? It must have been such a, a hard existence for the, the lighthouse keeper because during the, during the night he would have to stay awake to uh, make sure the light was flashing correctly. And then during the day he would be doing his normal everyday chores. It was a hard, very hard existence. But here you can just see the foghorn. What a view. What a stunning, fantastic view. It's beautiful. So, I hope you enjoyed that brief interlude down at the lighthouse. But now it's time to get back to work. And I've come back out onto the hills. And as you can see, I have got the scourge of the landscape photographer, blue skies, pretty much 100% blue skies. But it is what it is. I can't change it. I'm gonna to have to work with it. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, let's assume, let's just, Let's pretend that it's a holiday brochure shot or it's a Scottish tourist board shot. Let's pretend that's the brief. So I'm gonna photograph with that in mind. So Scottish tourist board, if you're watching, a rocking chair and the photo's yours. <laughs> so anyway, now because the sun's come out and it's very blue sky, bright, bright conditions, it's changed the colour of the water. The water's now quite blue. So therefore, and also the sun is at 90 degrees to the 
direction that the lens is pointing in. So I can use a polarizer to accentuate the blues of the water and of the sky to saturate it because we're taking a photograph for the Scottish National Tourist Board and they want it in their brochure and on their posters. So polarizer and also I'm going to try, and this is a bit of a gamble, I'm going to try a neutral density filter just to slow the water down in the bay below. I'm going to go for 10 seconds. I think I can just about get away with 10 seconds. I hope. Let's see how I get on. Now because I do quite a lot of coastal photography, my filters or my lenses are always prone to sea spray and salt. So I'm forever having to clean them. But rather than just rub them with a dry cloth, I carry some spray with me. Now again, rather than spraying the, the filter itself, I just spray the cloth and then just clean here. It's amazing how quickly the sea spray can get onto the filters and it's just, and it really does affect the image. So it's just a, it's just a part of the workflow that, I, that I'm used to now. Uh, I do an awful lot of coastal photography, so it's best to be safe than sorry. Dean's tip. <laughs> Let's get this shot done. So whilst I'm composing this photograph, I want to make sure that I want to consider certain key compositional features that I want to get right in this photograph. You can see the islands of the, the Xi'an Isles in the distance behind the lighthouse and just where one of the big isles in, in the foreground here it dips down below. It's not two islands, it's, it is one island, but there's a dip in the middle. And I want to position the, the lighthouse right in the center of that dip, so as to add the balance to the lighthouse and to the overall image. And also the chimneys on the, on the bothies, on the keeper's bothies there, I want to make sure that those chimneys remain in the water so as to provide the depth and uh, layers into the photograph. It just keeps it nice and tidy. And I'm sure the, the National Tourist Board, the Scottish Tourist Board will be really pleased with that. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I'm good to go. So uh, let's process the photograph and uh, see how it comes out. We don't always very rarely, in fact, get the weather conditions we choose or we hope for. But is it still worth photographing? You bet it is. Well, that's the end of my very brief visit to the Eileen Glass Lighthouse here on the Isle of Scalpe. It's a very beautiful lighthouse. It's extremely photogenic and I always enjoy coming here. And it's been great to have an opportunity for me for the first time to actually go down and uh, visit the, the, the keeper's bothies and the lighthouse itself. Very, very interesting. If anything, the wind has actually picked up as the days progressed which doesn't all go well for me because I'm due to catch the ferry across to the Uist Islands later on this afternoon. Fingers crossed. But I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you would consider joining me on my next, my next journey through the Scottish Highlands. It's a, it's a country and it's an area of Scotland which I live in. It's an area that I work in and it's, very, it's an area that I very much love. And I'd be truly appreciate it if you could join me for my next episode. But for now, I'm going to get back to the truck, drive down to the ferry, and I'm going to leave you with this beautiful, very photogenic lighthouse. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.